everybody. Wow, okay. I'm not going to lie, that was a lot of pressure just to, to wait for this. Okay, um, we're going to start off with a fun song. It's an old one. Done it before, but it's super encouraging because it is a wake-up song. So we're going to wake up with this song. Not just physically, but spiritually. Okay, let's do this.
slap, it is sweeter than wine. Because I know some people like wine because it's sweet. To me, it's bitter, but it's saying that God is sweeter. Meaning, some of us, if we choose to, we allow ourselves to get carried away with how sweet the wine is, but sometimes we don't let ourselves get carried away with how sweet God is. We don't allow our spirits to become drunk on His love. We don't allow ourselves to let go of who we are to be fully for Him. So, I wanna just go back into the first two verses and just focus on them and just really take it in. Take in who God wants you to be, not what you want yourself to be. It's all these I spend time with you, making all things new. Ooh, come on. Your light is breaking through the dark. Oh. Your love it is sweeter than wine, bringing joy, bringing light. Your hope is rising light through the dark. Again, again. It's all these I spend time with you.
Amy, good job. And I'm coming on screen. I'll let the band clear off there. Good job, you guys. Everybody on the other side of the screen is just going crazy right now in their living rooms. In living rooms across America and Canada. 
They're going bananas. Come on. Good job. Good worship this morning. Okay. Good morning, house. Good morning. I'm coming in. Here I am. Boom. Good morning. Man, I really want to say that uh, to the worship team this morning as they're leading, it, it's quite an environment to be leading in here at, uh, at Evangel when there's nobody in the, in, the, in the space. And so I just want to say hats off to them. And um, good job, Jamie, this morning, just, just pushing in and really leading us into a beautiful spot. I love the song, This Is What You Do, because it's about the fact that springtime is coming. I saw a comment in the live stream, and I'm going to have a computer here in just a second so I can kind of see what you guys are saying. And one of the comments was, the days are getting longer. And they are in a way, but apparently what happens at this time here is that the mornings kind of feel like they're getting shorter, but we get more time on the back end. So it is good, but it is dark outside. For um, you guys that are not in Fort St. John and maybe further down south and tie in every week, you'll, you will be uh, maybe surprised to hear that. <laughs> then we're still, we're still in dark. So it's good to be together. My name is Tony. I'm one of the pastors at Evangel, and I'm going to take you on a journey this morning. We are starting, I don't know if you saw the Facebook post earlier. Some of you are probably on Facebook fast, so you may not have seen it. But we are going to be in a new series here that's going to take us through the end of March. That we're calling Fit for Life. Holy healthy body and soul. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to unpack that a bit this morning. But first, let's just um, talk through a few announcements here. And um, just a couple things to think about. This is the month of prayer and fasting. So engage it however you feel led or stirred up to engage it. And here's my lovely wife, Sarah, with the computer. Great. So I can see what's going on here. And do something to engage this season. I, I would encourage you to have some things that you're praying through specifically for the month of January. This is a good time to think about what you're praying for all year round. And of course, we call it the month of prayer and fasting because this is a really, really good opportunity to engage some fasting at some, at some level. So consider how you want to fast. If you haven't done so already, I know lots of people in, in our community here are fasting right now. I've heard Everything from seven-day water-only fasts to 21-day um, Daniel fasts, what's a really a vegetarian fast, to all kinds of things in between. Lots of people are just saying no to social media and news. Come on. No to news. Lift your right hand. No, I'm just kidding. Say to speak after me. No, I'm just kidding. Hand over your Bible. I will not watch the news. There's so much crazy stuff going on. I, I get enough just from conversations with people to realize that, that I'm pretty happy that I'm not. I'm in a fast from news right now. It's a good thing. So sugar, a lot of people are going, going off sugar. This season for us is, although I'm going to talk a little bit about how this physio physiologically impacts us today, because it certainly does, fasting does. This season for us is about pushing in to who God is and in our walk with God and it's a good thing. It's a good way to start. It's a good way to start 2021, okay? So keep that in mind, prayer and fasting. And um, of course, I know you're probably all aware that we have been, we're, we are, we're under restrictions now for another four weeks. And yeah, I'm getting just as tired of it as you are, but we are in this crazy season. And, um, and so until I believe, I think it's four Sundays from today that we're, the, the restrictions have been carried forward so there won't be in-person gatherings at this point until February, doing the math, I think it's 12th, hopefully. And man, is it hard to believe? Oh my goodness, is it hard to believe that we, we will be at that point close to a whole year of this um, insane season that we're in? I know you're getting tired of us talking about it, but it's kind of there right in our faces. And so we process through, and um, you can actually see the public health order online, and you can see what the actual restrictions are. Restrictions are. The interesting thing is, is there are actually, there, you can still come to your house of worship for personal prayer and contemplation. And so if you want to, it's actually in the health order, if you want to come down here and you want to you kind of use this space just for some personal prayer and contemplation over the month of prayer and fasting, 
It's actually allowed. You just need to contact us first. And so you can actually just text or call Evangel. And if the time is reasonable, maybe we'll work with you on it. <laughs> um, if, it's like, if it's like 12 o'clock at night, maybe not. So text us and let us know if you want to do that. Because I know sometimes it's really cool to have, be in the church um, for, for your prayer time or your contemplation time. So, okay. Interesting times. Come on. Turn to your neighbor. High five them. I'm watching you guys. It's good to see you. Um, always seeing uh, the Hebrews there. It's good to see you guys. It's light down here in Salmon Arm. <laughs> Rub it in. Why don't you? No, I'm kidding, Kim. I know you're not rubbing it in. You're just rubbing it in. No, you're not. Um, Jenny, good to see you. Doucette's. Hey, we gave Marcus a day off today. Marcus wasn't on media. He's been on media nonstop for like ever. Um, the Western Guards, good to see you guys. The Fiorettes, man, good to see you, Alan and Carolyn, your family. Tara and Doug, good morning. The Shares, good to see you guys. The Johnstons, Ian and Tara. I'm just going through the list here. Just good to talk to people. Good morning, Danielle and Matt Durkash. You guys rock, and I see you're rocking parenthood too um, when I spy on you on Facebook. And Branch, is good to see you guys. The Barshes, the Kennans. Anraz, the Hummel family, come on. Wanda and Merlin are watching. Come on, everybody give it up for Wanda and Merlin. Do a virtual high five for Wanda and Merlin. Ron Riedel, man, Ron, I'm so blessed that you're on. You're on with us every single week. And we're praying for you, bro, in the season that you're in. Um, Georgia Marita, Voorhees, Clan in Edmonton. Shalene, good to see you guys. Wideman's, yes, okay. I better get preaching. I can just talk and comment all day <laughs> on comments. Okay, so... We're going to, um, without further ado, walk into this, and I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to be done right around 10 o'clock. And um, whether you're live right now or you're watching this on demand later, welcome to Evangel, welcome to the live stream. So we're going to talk about this, uh, so I'm going to introduce the series Fit for Life, and um, I want to read a couple passages of scripture first that I think you'll find interesting. And... I do, I do want to tell you, before we get into this, that we are into, when we think of fit for life and we think of being holy, healthy, body and soul, this is really a holistic journey that God has called us to walk in. And to be quite honest, I think there couldn't be a better season than now with all the craziness in our planet and all the, the unhealth and that, that being body, soul, and spirit. I think of the soul part of that, actually, the emotions and the the mental stuff that's going on in our heads in the season we're in. This is a time like no other. I was talking to um, a healthcare worker here just a couple weeks ago, and uh, I saw him in the store, and I said, how's life going? And he's like, it's, it's, it was a slow Christmas. I said, you know, but, but it was good. And I, I was surprised to hear that. And I said, it's going good? And he goes, well, no, not if you're talking work. Like the stuff that's going on in my work world, he works a lot in mental health, is, is pretty insane because of the lockdowns and the lack of socializing and all that stuff. So I think the timing for this is absolutely brilliant and absolutely perfect for us to walk into. What does it mean to be wholly healthy, body and soul? So I'm going to read a couple passages of scripture just by way of introduction, then we'll get into this, and, um, and we'll end with a, a couple listening prayer questions and just let Jesus speak to us, and that'll be good. So for the first one, it's 1 Corinthians 9. Verse 24, I love this passage. I put it to memory a while ago, but I'll read it right from the NLT. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone wins, but only one receives the prize? So, run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose. In every step, just think about that for a sec. So I run with purpose in every step. This is the Apostle Paul talking. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete. Think about that. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Paul is talking a little bit about his journey, and he's making a really clear connection between even physical fitness and health and how that plays into his call as a pastor and apostle. That's fascinating. To the point where he says, I discipline my body. 
I actually discipline my body. I train it like an athlete, teaching it to do what, I, what it should. The passage goes on. So you know there's not chapter divisions in the Greek, but we put them in just to make it um, a little bit easier to kind of follow along with what's happening. But it flows directly into chapter 10, verse 1. He says, I don't want you to forget, dear brothers and sisters, about our ancestors in the wilderness long ago. All of them were guided by a cloud that moved ahead of them, and all of them walked through the sea on dry ground. In the cloud and in the sea, all of them were baptized as followers of Moses. All of them ate the same spiritual food. All of them drank the same spiritual water. For they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them, and that rock was Christ. That's a really, really crazy idea. Paul is saying, Jesus himself was present with the people of Israel. So he's saying, he's saying here up to this point, he's saying the people of Israel, they had it all. They had spiritual food. They had spiritual drink. They had Jesus walking with them. They followed the cloud. They had, they had all this stuff going for them. But then look what he says here. Yet God was not pleased with them, with most of them, and their bodies. I think you need to pay attention to the word bodies there. And their bodies, their physiological beings were scattered in the wilderness. These things happened as a warning to us, he goes on, so that we should not crave evil things as they did or worship idols as some of them did. As the scriptures say, the people celebrated with feasting and drinking and they indulged in pagan revelry. Isn't that interesting? Um, And I'm going to go here. I want to read a couple more passages, but I have them in my phone. I'm going to switch translations here. So Paul is saying there, he's saying the people of Israel are kind of the opposite of what I'm telling you you need to do. When I'm talking, he's saying, I, I, t- I discipline my body to bring it under control so I won't be disqualified from the call that God has on my life. That's what he's saying at the end of chapter 9. But then at the beginning of chapter 10, look at the people of Israel. They had it all. They had all this spiritual food and spiritual drink. Jesus was walking with them. The cloud was leading them by day. They had Moses as their pastor, so to speak. And he says, but they lived in this undisciplined a really an undisciplined lifestyle, and they went after the cravings of their flesh. And Philippians, Paul will pick up this idea in Philippians chapter 3 as he describes what it looks like to be walking not with God. He says this, and I'm reading from the message, Philippians 3 verse 17. Stick with me, friends. Keep track of those you see running this same course, headed for the same goal. There are many out there taking other paths choosing other goals, and trying to get you to go along with them. I've warned you of them many times. Sadly, I have to do it again. All of them, and he's talking about people that are not walking the way God wants them to walk. All they want is easy street. Let me just tell you right now, for the, for the, for the life to the full that God has in front of you, the enemy of that will always be comfort. All they want is easy street. They hate Christ's cross and the suffering and the discipline that comes with it. But easy street, he goes on, is a dead end street. Those who live there make their bellies their gods. <laughs> Belching out their praise. <laughs> I love the way Eugene Peterson puts it here. All they think of is their appetites. I know this is not what you wanted to hear right after Christmas holidays. <laughs> But there is something here to be said. Now, there's nothing wrong with feasting. There's nothing wrong with celebrating with good food and drink. But there's something to be said here of a culture that actually makes their belly their, their God. Pursuit of life to, is the easy street. And this is not where God wants us to be. And it's where the people of Israel were. That's what Paul was kind of setting apart. He's setting apart the way he would discipline his life and the way he would run the race so as to win it. But the people of Israel that, for a season anyway, cast off restraint. A couple more verses, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. And these kind of just are broad, sweeping passages that set the tone for where we're going with fit for life, holy, healthy, body and soul. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 says, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. For God bought you with a high price. So... You must honor God with your spirit. (laughs) No, that's not what it says. With your soul and with your thinking. That's not what it says either. It says, so because you have been bought with a price, you must honor God with your physiological aspects of of your world, your body. 
And then 3 John verse one, uh, chapter 1, verse 2. I love this one. Dear friends, you ready for this? Turn to your neighbor. Come on, I'm watching the comments. Are you doing this? Turn to your neighbor and say, dear friend. I know it sounds quite official, but this is how the, the disciple John addresses this letter. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. I'm going to read that again because it's, it's, it's a crazy idea that for whatever reason it's just disconnected in church world. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health. Good health. That's the word there, health. And he says, I pray that you may enjoy good health. You know what that means? Come on. We live in a culture that's saturated by a desire to be healthy. He says, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along. So, so what John is saying here is what should have happened with the people of Israel, okay, is as they, their soul was being tended for and cared for by the leadership of Moses and by the cloud and fire by night and, and all those things that God was doing, spiritual food, spiritual drink, Christ himself was the rock that was feeding and sourcing them. He is saying this, the idea here is even as your soul prospers, you may also enjoy good health, body, soul, and spirit. Come on, if you agree with that, say amen. If you don't agree with that, don't say anything. Just hang in there. <laughs> Come on. And then finally, Luke chapter 10, verse 27. Now I'm going to read this from the message because you know this so well. Uh, it's the passage, you, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. But I love the way Eugene Peterson spins it in the message translation. Luke 10, verse 27, he said this. He's, this is what Jesus said. This is the greatest commandment that you love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and muscle, come on, and intelligence, and that you love your neighbor as well as you do yourself. And what Jesus was actually inviting us into when he, when he brings this out, but the greatest commandment, how do you summarize everything that the Old Testament says? What, what, how do you summarize all of the commands? He says it's this. God wants you to love and worship him with all of you, with all of you. And I love the way Eugene Peterson throws in the word muscle. For a little interesting word study, if you want to do this on Google later, search the message translation for every time the word muscle shows up, and it's actually quite fascinating. Okay, so let's do some background. I'm going to pray first. God, just thank you for this time that we've had this morning together already to worship you, to push in, just to receive from you. And we thank you for your word and your word that brings life and teaches us how to live and teaches us how to worship you and teaches us how to walk with you, teaches us the way of salvation. And we pray, God, that as we introduce this series today and then, and then step into a journey together that I think is going to be transformative in our lives, we pray and we invite you by your spirit to lead us. In Jesus' name, amen. How did we get here? How did I get here to this point, wanting to walk this through with our house well, to be honest, it's been a thought that's been in my mind for quite a while. I would say for at least two or three years, I've thought it would be really, really good to walk this through as a church and to, and to just kind of muscle into what does it mean to be holy and healthy body and soul. And then a few, year, a few months ago, actually, I was talking with my brother, Rich, who had picked up a, a, a world-class book, bestseller book. I mean, this is like the book to get if you haven't bought a book yet this year for reading. This is the book. It's just like the most amazing book ever. It's called Boondock Church. (laughs) Come on, tech guys, you can laugh. You can laugh. It's okay. Shay, you can laugh. It's all right. So my brother Rich, who's a pastor in Ferndale, Washington in the U.S., he's um, reading through Boondock Church, and I actually cracked out of Boondock Church a story. So isn't really the heart of, the, it's not the heart of the book, it's just an extra bonus material type thing, but it's the story of something called Team Fit. So if any of you have been around Evangel for any length of time, Team Fit may ring a bell. Team Fit was something we walked through as a church, it was a bit of a small group program that we did as a community back in 2008, that was, come on, going on 13 years ago, isn't that insane? And I tell the story of what we did over this um, three-month journey called Team Fit, and my brother reads this, and he calls me up, and he's like, Tony, 
I want to do, t- we want to do team fit in our church. I think it's exactly what we need right now. Just with the season we're walking through, it would be really good for people to have something practical to kind of get their teeth into. And I said to them immediately, like immediately, we have this, and Rich and I FaceTime fairly often, but I said immedi- immediately, I'm like, Rich, I've been wanting to do this too. If you're going to do it, let's do it together. So the really interesting and cool thing about this is their church in, at C- uh, Christ the King, Ferndale, is also journeying through with this, and they're introdu- he's introducing the same series today. So if you don't like my preaching and you want to hear a different angle on it, you can just log out now at this point and log in to CTK Ferndale. I'm kidding. Don't, don't do that. Wouldn't that be crazy if all of a sudden our viewers just drop? I would have an absolute crisis as a pastor. So I know you're not going to do that. But we will be journeying this together with uh, Christ the King in Ferndale, Washington. I'm actually, I think it's so cool. We've never done this before, so it's kind of exciting. So Rich and I start talking about it, and, and we start processing together. And the interesting thing is this whole idea of being healthy body, soul, and spirit is something that I think we have always valued. So as Rich and I were talking, we realized we, as, as teenagers growing up, I have two brothers, Rich and Gabe are my two brothers. We're all within two and a half years of each other. But when we grew up, we were very active, as, as three boys naturally would be. In Bella Coola, where we spent most of our growing up years, we were actually known by the local population as the, the Warner Mountain Goats. Like, seriously, they actually thought we were kind of like mountain goats. And we, were, we, would, we would always be climbing mountains. And, and that just, we, just, we were surrounded by mountains down there, but we were always climbing mountains, super active, Loved doing things like fishing and hunting. Loved playing ba- basketball was the sport back then. And we were just very active. And, he, and as I think back on it, I remember that church was, there was a total disconnect when it came to church world in the sense of physical activity and things. You, didn't, never, you never associated healthy bodies with, with spiritual life. And, and the epitome of that would be church potlucks. Church potlucks were always coffee and cake, <laughs> you know, there was never a thought to, to like what would be a healthy alternative ever given to that. And of course, going to youth group back then, and so I don't know if some of you guys grew up attending youth group, in youth I learned that all things evil were connected to my body, whether it was addictions or alcohol or sex or what you're listening to, rock and roll, that all things evil were connected to what was going on in our bodies. So there was this, a bit of a disconnect between what, um, what I thought of as church and the God life and following God and spirituality and what was going on in my physical body. They're kind of separate, which is actually a heresy that the early church had to deal with called Gnosticism, or out of that came a heresy called Docetism, which was this dualistic idea that over here you have your spiritual life and over here you have the rest of your life and they're separate. They are, they are not. This is not a biblical idea at all. In fact, I hesitate sometimes to even say that your body, soul, and spirit, because we right away start to go, you know, and, and I think it makes, it helps to understand how things work. I heard, I heard a guy tell me one time that I, I have a body, you know, um, how'd it go? I have, a, I have a mind, I live in a body, but I am spirit, and you have these three parts of you, and I get that. I understand the rationale behind that, but there, there's not a separation. Like, you are so intricately connected that it's beyond belief that what happens in your spirit affects what happens in your body. What happens in your body affects what happens in your, your soul or your mind or your thinking or your emotions. And that's not up for grabs. This is, this is psychology 101. We see that now, my goodness. You know, like with what's happening in our world today, what happens in our our minds, our thinking, and the fear that we're dealing with, and the loneliness that we're dealing with is having a, a physiological effect on people. And I was just talking with a friend recently who was, who was connected with a, with a care home type facility, long-term care type facility in, in another province in Canada. And he was saying that, 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 he, that in this care home, there have been so many deaths this year and actually not even related to COVID, related to all the other physiological impacts of things like loneliness and stress and fear. The Bible says that men's hearts will fail them in last days for what? That's their, phys- their physical body will fail them, heart attack, that kind of thing, for what's going on in their emotions, for what they're experiencing spiritually. So you are so intimately connected. But I grew up in, a, in sort of a different understanding of that, whether... Uh, 
By, by no means do I think that was intentional. That's just kind of the way we thought back in those days. So we came to Fort St. John. I'm just giving you a little backstory to my journey. And when I came to Fort St. John, hither, uh, before that moment, I would say Sarah and I really thought about health and wellness like sort of maybe the average person would. And it was, a, it was something we kind of achieved, we, we would push into, and it would be a pattern of, a cyclical, a cyclical pattern in our lives. We were doing a bit of fasting, but we didn't understand the physiological impact of fasting really either, so it was more of a spiritual discipline and only a spiritual discipline. And so I'm just trying to tell you, we, we probably were kind of the average in our thinking. We came to Fort St. John in 2003. Yes, yes, Sarah's here with me this morning. In 2003, that is eight, 18 years now, coming on 18 years ago. And I always tell, I love telling this story. I've, maybe you've heard it before, but we, I'm a small town guy. I had never had lived really in a community where there was even a Tim Hortons. So I'm pastoring at Evangel. I'm 30 years old at that point, 2003. And pastoring at Evangel, and one block down the road <laughs> is a Tim Hortons. And I kid you not, I was... I would be in the office doing work, hanging out with people, and then somebody would come in, let's go do a coffee. We would, we would walk down to Tim Hortons. Actually, back then, we would drive down to Tim Hortons. I, I'm ashamed to say it, a block. I would drive a block. We would drive down to Tim Hortons. We'd go in, and always extra large coffee. I love Tim Hortons coffee. It would be triple, triple. So that means, for you that don't know, it would be three, three creams and three sugars. This is black, by the way, and it's decaf. Is it decaf? Yes, it's decaf, because it's the month of prayer and fasting. No, no caffeine, okay? And so I would do this routine. I would, I'd do this routine, routine at least three times a day. And then on top of that, just always had a pot of coffee. Always had a pot of coffee on the church. In addition to that, was not thinking at all about health and diet and exercise and any of that, and was caught up in a lot of busyness. That, those early years at Evangel were super busy, and we were, we were just lots of stuff was going on. And so I, it was about 2005, 2006, my, my kids and I, and they were all little back then, but we were all hanging out at Charlie Lake. And, and I remember just how we were having a family day, and we loved doing that kind of stuff, getting outside and hanging out there. And I took, I, I ran down to the water with my kids, and then I was, we were all hanging down by the water, and then we all came back up the bank. If you know what, if you know what the park looks like, you know that there's often a bit of a hill coming back up out of the lake. I came back up, and I literally, man, I could not get my breath back at all. I was so winded and so tired. And I had this moment, something just triggered in my mind, and I was at my heaviest at that point in my entire life. And I really had, wasn't thinking anything of it, but at that moment, I thought, um, Tony, you better do something now. Or, or you may be setting yourself up. And I, I pictured myself being 65 and not able to do anything with my kids at that point. Seriously, it was just like an aha moment. So I went from there, and I, I started thinking, I actually said at one point, I said at one point, I said, I wish I, if Steve Hobb, if you're watching this, um, either now or later, Steve and Virginia Hobb, great people, part of our church community. And I remember saying at that point, if I only had a job like Steve Hobb, Steve Hobb, Steve and Virginia own a, own a construction company, Hob Homes in town. And at that point, Steve's business was, I think, at it, its beginning stages, so it might have been him and a dozen other guys. And they, were, they would just be working hard all the time, and I just would look at Steve and think, man, he looks so jacked, come on. Looks like Jimmy Noble. There you go, Jimmy. Little, little, there's a little comment for you. He's in the back. And I, I thought, if I only had a job that actually, I just had to do the job and I would be healthy, that would be great. And I'm a pastor, and my, my, I'm sitting behind a desk, and I'm working on stuff. I'm, it's a sort of a desk job, and I'm hanging out with people a lot, doing coffee meetings and lunch meetings and breakfast meetings, and, and it's just not helping me. And I thought in my mind, I thought, if I could only have a job like Steve, then that would be, that'd be good for me, and that would, I'd stay healthy and all of that. Let's keep track of the time here. I'm a gabber, aren't I? Sarah, am I a gabber? She's in the back. Thumbs up. I'm a gabber. I have no problem talking. Um, and I talk my way into health. Come on. <laughs> no, seriously. I felt, as I said that about Steve, I felt like God said immediately, Tony, you can do whatever, whatever you want to do with your job. Make your job become healthy for you. And a few things flashed in my mind. I pictured myself taking people for meetings to the walking track <laughs> instead of, <laughs> I'm spitting everywhere here, instead of, 
instead of taking him out for dinner and hamburgers at, at you know, wherever, at the, at the pub. And I started envisioning how I could kind of change things up. But what I really got a hold of at that point was the idea of let's, let's, take, let's go through this as a church. God, if you're actually inviting me into this journey, let's do it as a church. And so we did it for the first time. I don't know the exact date. Maybe some of you guys on the live stream will know this date. <laughs> Gabe Voorhees says, Jimmy and Steve are still jacked. Yes, I would have to agree with you on that statement, Gabe. But it was around 2005 or 6 that we did this thing called iFit. I preached a 12-week series, and we walked through. I, it was just revelatory for me. I was floored by some of the things I was discovering as we walked through Scripture together. One of them was this. God is, and you can put this down as if you want to point one. <laughs> Here you go, it's point one. Um, God is the source, the author of the health and wellness movement. Yeah, I thought you thought it was the yoga guys across the street or the, you know, the tree huggers over there. No, it's God is absolutely the author of the health and wellness movement. And if you just take a pop, Vadim always says, go back to Genesis and you'll see so many things that are so important for us to understand. And if you go back into Genesis 1, you will see some really, really, really cool things about what it means to be healthy. And I, I almost put to you, like the earth as God created it was this beautiful spa kind of, kind of atmosphere. And some of the things he does is he sets, up, he sets up rhythms in life, right? We have day and night, and we have, we have sleep. You know, there's going to be eight hours, or in our, our case, 16 hours of dark. And there's going to be rhythms of sleep and then being awake and in the light, and you have light coming into the picture. And isn't it interesting how we're discovering lately that light is so important? Some of you guys probably have these light lamps that kind of give you sunlight because we realize sunlight is a huge huge part of health, and one of the reasons why we deal with a bit more depression in our climate in the winter. There's not as much sunlight. God puts in light. He puts, he, he gives us water. Water is a huge essential ingredient to what it means to be healthy. Oxygen. The air is loaded with oxygen. One of the things that Sarah and I have been discovering even lately in the last three months is how important it is to breathe. We're not, apparently, most of us are not getting enough oxygen because we're not breathing deeply enough because we're too stressed. As soon as you get stressed and you get anxious, you start shallow breathing. And uh, we've realized in a whole new way, with, in a whole new light, that star, stop, take a deep breath, appreciate, and then respond is actually a really good thing for us to do because it pulls us into breathing deeply. Oxygen. And then, I know all you hunter guys aren't going to like this, but then... <laughs> He loads up the planet. God loads up the planet with every green thing to eat. That would be vegetables. Everybody say vegetables. Come on. You've gone silent on the comments here. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm having too much fun here. Okay. Um, talk to me, for St. Johners. Come on, talk to me. And God loads up the planet with green things. Spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, Celery. <laughs> and he, apples, yes, and grapes and sweet things too. Fruits and vegetables, really, <laughs> the Daniel fast. He loads up the planet with that, and then into that environment, he puts all living beings in the sense of mankind and the animals and birds and fish. And he says these words, be fruitful and multiply. In other words, I've given you everything you need to be fruitful and multiply. And what's interesting is now the health and wellness movement picks up on some of these things. I mean, I'm fascinated by how crucially important to my physiological self, but also to my spirit and my soul, my thinking, how important good eating is and how much I need to probably eat a bit more green stuff. I'm like you. I don't like eating green stuff. We recently got a juicer, and that's helping me immensely because I can go <laughs> and get it all in one shot. But God has set it up right there for us to experience life and life to the full. And no, I'm not calling everybody to become vegetarians or vegans, okay? Don't, don't worry. Take a sigh of relief. Um, I'm not walking away from meat yet. <laughs> yet. I should, I, you should always have a little disclaimer at the end. Yet. And into that environment, God puts mankind. And what's interesting even further is that his first kind of command, other than be fruitful and multiply, is a command about what they should eat, right? So the first thing God says is, hey, and I'm going to give you some instructions around your diet. And he says, don't eat from that tree, eat from that tree. And mankind, of course, breaks that command and 
sends us into a, a tumble of wickedness and sin and darkness and death and all of that because we didn't listen to that first command. And no, the first command wasn't just about the diet. That's not what I'm saying. It was way bigger than that. But it still is quite provocative. God is the source. And, I, and so as we were walking through this iFit thing in 2005, I just began to see this with a whole new set of lenses. Another piece that was utterly fascinating to me, and I'm not going to get into it now. We're going to unpack this later on. But was the nation of Israel and the people of Israel, and you started to study the law. And when I talk about the law, I'm not just talking about the Ten Commandments. That's part of it. But then there's some 600 plus various laws and regulations that God himself, like this is God himself. This isn't just some great preacher kind of comes up with these guidelines. God himself gives these guidelines to the nation of Israel, his chosen people that are to be his own. And as you walk through those, it is stunning the amount of laws that have to do with hygiene and have to do with how you care for your body and have to do with how you eat dietary things like the kosher laws. This is God. I, th- I thought, wait a sec. I thought God didn't have time for this. I thought God was all consumed with my spiritual life and my, my thinking and my emotions and my soul. Why is God so, so fascinated with the body itself that he would give all these laws related to that? Really, really interesting study. And maybe I'll crack this open more later, but in the 1300s, the bubonic plague that went right across Europe, and it, was, it, it made COVID-19 look like a walk in the park. Bubonic the bubonic plague was intense. They say it wiped out like a quarter of the population of London at that time. What was really interesting is as, as this, this, this pandemic spread, the, 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 Israel, the nation of Israel at that point in time, if you were a Jew, you, were, you literally had to hide. You were under so much persecution because, here's the reason, because you were not getting sick. The Jewish people had what appeared to be an immunity to the bubonic plague. Uh, bubonic plague. They weren't getting sick, they weren't dying, they weren't getting wiped out. Now, it wasn't, some of them were getting sick, but the vast majority were not. The stats were totally different. And so the rumor that was spreading at that time was that this, this plague must be coming from the Jewish people. So if you were a Jew at that time, you literally had to, you had to hide because the whole population was looking for somebody to blame, not unlike our day today, and you were a target. Of course, the bubonic plague did not come from the nation of Israel. What, what was going on was they were following God's hygienic laws in the Old Testament. The eating laws and the hygiene laws and all, all they were following this. At that point in time, the nation of Israel, huge identity in the Torah and what God had said. And as they did that, they didn't realize this, but as they followed God's law, they actually were becoming immune to that particular I don't know if it's a virus or bacteria, but whatever it was, they were, they were immune to it because they were following God's law. Fascinating. Then you look at the individual laws. I started seeing Jesus in a new light as we're in this iFit series. And all of a sudden you see Jesus says, he's like, hey guys, John 10, 10, the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. I'm like, this is just... You know, like, I just love the word full there because I think we, we, we like to sparse, we like parse things out and go, he's come that I might have spiritual life or he's come that I might have mental life or I might, I think he might be renewed or whatever. But Jesus is saying, no, I've come that you might have life. And if you're missing what I'm saying here, this is full life. This is everything about you have come, you might have life. Don't miss this, that when Jesus comes on the scene in his ministry, his three-year ministry that's recorded in the four gospels, that what does he spend I would say almost the majority of his time doing. It is not preaching and teaching. That is not what Jesus spends the majority of his time doing. When you really look at what he he was doing and how he was living and how he was acting, he spent an exorbitant amount of time with his 12 disciples. He was pouring into them all the time. But the other thing he did, he literally, it looks like Jesus is a, 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 a medical clinic set up in the field. He is out there with his disciples and they have thousands of people that have come to him. Why? They've come to him because they're sick in body. They have all kinds of diseases and illness. There's sore backs. There's knees that, are, that, are, that are, have the meniscus worn out. That was something I had going on back in those days as well. And uh, it was a real limiter for me. I could hardly walk at times. I, I remember I probably limped. I limped badly for six months in 2005. And, and these are the kinds of people that lined up in front of Jesus. And Jesus didn't give them the, well, I got really important things to do. I need to preach the gospel. I need to talk about 
divorce and remarriage. I, I, he, he's, he, he literally had such a passion for healing people's bodies. He didn't turn anybody away. The Bible says that everybody that came to him with sickness or disease, everyone was healed. And the God of the universe, God creates this environment. It's spa-like. He's the author of the health and wellness movement. And then you look at Jesus, and Jesus comes to give us whole, whole life. <laughs> not talking whole life insurance, but he comes to give us whole life and life to the full. And he has a massive passion for this. So we started walking this through, and it was just revelation for me, and, and, and revelation after revelation. I had, at that time, I had a meniscus tear on my left knee. I had it actually diagnosed and was planning to go in to do surgery and things like that. And uh, a friend of mine who's, who's very educated in these things, he says, Tony, you, you might be able to work that out without surgery. And I said, well, how's that possible? He's like, well, you just have to start getting healthy, exercising it. And I remember him poking me in the tummy at that time and going, and get in your core. <laughs> you know, he, he just pushed it in. He goes, you get your core a little bit stronger. There's a lot of things you can do to start working this out. And so I started actually thinking seriously about getting healthy. Sarah and I bought an elliptical. We set up an elliptical in our basement, a cross trainer. And I would get down there, and I'd be in so much pain in that knee that I was ready to give up. But one of the things I would do back then, and I'm actually going to encourage you to hack the system over the next three months. In other words, your, what happens in your physical body can be the most unbelievable springboard for your spiritual life. And we'll be hacking that system like, like mad over three months. This isn't just about getting healthy so that you can be healthy and fit and achieve your goals and your dreams and desires. This is about being healthy body, soul, and spirit. Holy, healthy body and soul. And you use one sometimes as a springboard to get you into the other. And so I'm on the elliptical and I actually have my Bible in front of me. I, I'm using an iPad or some kind of device. And I'm, and I'm reading along, and I'm in pain. My knee hurts so bad, I'm ready to quit. And at that point, as I'm reading, I was in, I was in the book of 1 Peter, and I'm around 1 Peter um, 4, verse 12 to 13. Is it okay if I just read it to you really quick? Come on. People, talk to me. Come on, talk to me. There's some comments in there. Yeah, okay. Terry Young says, Team Fit was so fun. Keith Barsh. Veggies, isn't that what cows eat? <laughs> yes, that's why cows are so good. Yeah, come on. Um, some of you, Shannon, Shannon Bullock, she's like, oh, I love Team Fit. Well, we're going back there. Come on. Uh, we're going back there. I don't know what it's going to look like in the season that we're in, but we're uh, definitely wanting to get back there. Okay, where am I at here? Tony, get your head together. Okay, First Peter, I, I just want to read this to you because I'm re as I'm on the elliptical, I'm reading this passage. And, um, and I'm in pain. My knee hurts. And I ha I've had to all my life deal with, I wouldn't call it necessarily chronic pain, but definitely back issues and, and joint issues, knee issues. And so I'm, I'm just there again. And, it, and, I, and I'm reading, and I'm, I'm reading my Bible, and I'm in pain, and I'm trying to go on this elliptical. And I read this, this verse right here. Dear friends, verse, uh, 1 Peter 4, verse 12, has nothing to do with the topic. I'm just telling you what I was reading. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through, as if something strange were happening to you. <laughs> and there's Peter talking to me. Actually, it was Jesus talking to me at that point. He's like, Tony, don't be surprised at the suffering you're going through. And of course, that verse unpacks the suffering of Jesus and the invitation to join in the suffering of Jesus. And again, I know, I know that verse isn't just talking about exercise. It's talking about partnering with Christ, bearing your cross, all of that. But at that point, the living word came alive to me. The rhema came alive to me. And I realized, oh, there is some pain in the journey and I should embrace it. And at that moment, because God was speaking to me and because I let God come into that part of my journey, this is really, really important. For some of you, um, this is going to be the best news you've ever heard. When I start talking about this from a pulpit, I'm talking about how God is for you, body, soul, and spirit. It's the best news you've ever heard because you're whole story has been fighting this and fighting for it and moving ahead. And all of a sudden you realize, yeah, God actually wants to get on this journey with you. I can't tell you how many times in my life I have been rescued by a word from God. He has spoken something to me and it's actually given me a breakthrough. And I'm there on the elliptical and I see this word and I go, pain is okay. It's part of the journey. 
I know there's good pain and there's bad pain. Hold on, we're going to get to that. But at that point, God was saying, just keep going. And I did. And I, and I kept going. And I pushed through. And we went through it as a church in iFit. And then two, about two years later in 2008, some of you were talking about Team Fit. Team Fit, we made it a group competition, opened it up to the community. Lots of people came into that. One guy lost 88 pounds. This is the journey we've been on. This is, and this has been our story. This has been our reality. For Sarah and I, um, up until this point, even, I want to show you a couple of pictures. Actually, Levi and I just went out on, the, uh, on Friday. And I don't know, can I get that picture up there? Anthony, if you're back there. There it is. Can you, can you do the one where Levi's way behind me? There's one? Yes. Okay. He's not way. I actually, when Levi and I are hiking like this, I always take pictures when he's behind me because I just want to, just want to rub it in later on. This is me and Levi up at the uh, Babcock Ridge. Now this is, I, I think it's Babcock or Roman Mountain or something, but it's where the Emperor's Challenge is run. Actually, we are standing right at that point over the Emperor's Challenge trail around its summit. And so we went in and, and over, over, over a couple of days did about 25 to 30 kilometers on, in snowshoes. We don't have snowshoes on there because there's no snow on top. Man, I'm telling you right now, if you don't get outside because it's winter, don't let that keep you inside. It's beautiful out there. But I remember back to that time in, in, 2000, in 2005 when Levi at that point was maybe like five or six and thinking, when I'm an old man, <laughs> I look very old in that photo, I want to be able to keep up with him. And the, the whole journey of the, I was just going to tell you this, the whole journey of the last five years, you know, if you, if you were around in Team Fit Days and iFit Days, I just want to say the journey has intensified and the revelation for Sarah and I over the last five, or five to seven years, where when we realize what it means to be renewed and to let God work renewal in our lives, that it is a body, soul, and spirit thing. And that revelation has just deepened. One of the things that we have realized um, is the, how powerful God's word is to impact us, not just our spirit, but our soul. And when I say soul, I mean mind, will, emotions, that part of us, thinking, how powerful God's word is to impact our spirit life, for sure. God's word saves. And it doesn't just save you for the time that you live on this planet, but it assures you of everlasting life. God's word saves. God's word saves, it saves, it saves, the spirit. But then you realize it impacts the mind and the thinking as well. And beyond that, the body. And one of the, the things in God's word that most speaks to this, I think there's two things on a scientific level easily proven. One is fasting, and we're in the month of prayer and fasting. You know that fasting as a, as a law given by God is good for you on every level? I don't know, how, how do you describe this? But some of us right now are in, in fasting and we're just going, I'm thinking more clearly. I'm thinking more clearly. <laughs> I, a couple years ago, I, I came through the end of Christmas and into January 1. I was feeling as depressed as I'd ever felt in my life. It wasn't related to anything specifically, but I just felt a dark cloud. We had planned to start fasting on January 1st. I remember telling Sarah, I'm like, I can't, I don't, how can I fast? I am depending on pop and chips and ice cream right now to get me through the day. Just sounds like torture <laughs> to stop eating. But we went into it because we had we'd committed to this. Before God, we had committed to this. And by the time we got to about January 2nd or 3rd, I was utterly shocked by the way my emotional state had just shifted. I went from a dark cloud to being on a mountaintop. Some Christians go, never fast for the physical benefit of it. And they get all kind of weird about that. I'm just going to tell you something right now. The church has been doing this for hundreds of years. We try to separate the spiritual and the physical. And I'm telling you, it shouldn't be something that you separate. It should be something that you celebrate. Came across this crazy quote um, by a guy, I got it in my notes, by a guy named Regan Sutherland. And he says this, for Christians, the body is not a thing to transcend, but to resurrect. It's not good. <laughs> the body is not a thing to transcend but to resurrect. The truth of the matter is, is God wants to move in your life, body, soul, and spirit. Whew, I got a lot more I could say, but I'm going to finish there, okay? Here's how to get the most, just really quickly, and then I'm going to close with a listening prayer question. Here's how to get the most 
out of the next three months. And this will be a three-month journey. I'm planning on going right to the end of March, and we'll, at that point, be right on the doorstep of Easter, so we'll transition into something different then. But we're going to be in this fit for life right till March. Here's how to get the most out of it. Number one, just tag into the live streams. Whatever's happening in the future, we have no idea, but we know we're going to be live streaming every week. And tag into the live streams. I'm going to be hitting this from multiple angles. We're going to talk about, for instance, resistance and the power of resistance in your life. Now, if you're, if you're an exercise um, freak, you know that. You know that growth doesn't come without resistance. There's a spiritual truth there that we're going to unlock into. We're going to talk about eating. And <laughs> isn't that interesting? I always think it's, it's so interesting. There's a few things that we get really touchy about, and one is our pocketbook. So whenever the preacher talks about giving um, or talks about finances, we get touchy about that. But the other one is the refrigerator. Two things that we would rather not have God move in on. But your God is a God of the full life. And he wants to get into you and into your world and transform every single part of it, including what happens in the refrigerator. This is actually really good news. It's not bad news. Don't freak out. Don't panic. Is there anybody panicking? Ben Hummel says, yep. Okay, Ben, I'm glad you're still with me. Okay. Your God is a God who's interested in all of it, and we're going to start to un- unpack that. We're going to talk a lot over the next three months about soul health. I, I really feel something on the fact that your mind is sacred space. Your mind is sacred space and no unclean thing should be allowed to penetrate it. And we're going to talk a bit about thinking and how to take Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, and actually tra- take that and move that into our lives. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, your body as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. We're going to talk about having vision in life, habits and all of that stuff. Just tie into the live stream that's going to move you ahead. The second thing to do, though, is enter the month of prayer and fasting. Engage this month. Do it. There is no better way to hack the system on body, soul, and spirit health than to just go into fastedness. So that means you have 21 days as of today till the end of this month. There's lots you can do in that time. Maybe you need to, maybe you've already done a one-day fast or two-day fast, and you're like, I think I could take on more. Take on more. Some of you have done three-day fast. You need to go to seven. Do seven water only. Just go hardcore. This is the singularly one of the greatest things you can do to jumpstart yourself into being fit for life. So I would say, first, get to the live stream. Second, engage month of prayer and fasting. Thirdly, I want you to think this through today, and I'm going to actually do some listening prayer on this in a second. God is interested in what you do here. Let that be a, a, an underlying thought. When we get to February and March, start to prayerfully ask Jesus what he wants you to do in terms of just a physical health regimen. So it would be what, how you're going to eat, how you're going to exercise, maybe some goals you have. I want you to actually think that through on a personal level. This has, you know, I'm going to have to turn this in and submit it with, with a tithe check. <laughs> that would be fun. Um, but think about that. February, March, would you be willing to enter into something new in that season to accompany this journey, body, soul, and spirit? The fourth thing is consider if you could possibly partner and join kind of as an accountability group, maybe say three to 10 people that would journey with you. Now, I know we don't know whether we can gather yet or how that's going to look in the future, but you can certainly, we connect right now with, with dozens and dozens of people every week via technology like Zoom. So is there a few people you could walk with over that February to March period? Think about that. And um, if you're forgetting this, I'll post it later, okay? And um, we're, gonna, we're thinking of adding a few other things into the mix. We might even make it a competition. We are right now watching the regulations to see what we can do and where we can go with that in the future. We're not completely sure at this point, but it's going to be a, a good journey. So, whew. Yep, Shalene, you're bang on. Discipline under pressure produces strength. Positively, yep. Lots of good, lots of good, good, good comments here in the comment feed. Really glad you guys are engaging the feed here today. I, I want to close with the listening prayer question, and, um, and then we're going to be done, okay? So we're going to bring some music in. And I just want you to quiet yourself before God. Let's just do it. Let's just stop. Right where you're at in your living room, just stop. That means if you're going to grab a coffee, freeze. <laughs> you know, I'd encourage you to, 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 to sit up in an alert 
as an alert posture. If you're in your couch right now, just get out of the slouchy zone and just sit up like you're ready to receive something. Stop. Straight back. Feet planted on the floor. Stop. Man, what a luxury, hey, just to stop. We don't do this very much as we're sleeping. <laughs> stop. Now take a deep breath. Yeah, breathe it out. This whole planet, man, perfectly designed for you to experience life. Why don't you just breathe in some more of that God-created oxygen? Now, I want you to think right now of one thing that you're grateful for as it, as, as it relates to where you're at in this journey of holiness and health, body and soul. What's one thing you're grateful for? We always go to gratitude. It doesn't matter if we're feeling on top of the world or not. It doesn't matter if we're at our best health ever or we're at our worst health ever. If you're going to move forward, it's going to be from a heart that is grateful. If you're going to move forward, it's going to be from a place of gratitude. So one thing you're appreciative right now for to God it might just be that you're you still got you still breathing. You're still breathing. Could be for some goals that you kicked through in the last two weeks or the last year. Could be as simple as I'm just thankful for life. We are grateful. <laughs> Not anxious, grateful. Not fearful, appreciative, hearts full of gratitude. Okay, now we're just gonna listen. I want you just to pay attention to what drops into your heart. We say tune into spontaneity. And it's just this, simply this. Um, God, as we, as we start this journey now, and, and maybe for some of us this was a curveball this morning, others maybe have been, have, been caught, have been caught some of my cues along the way that we were going to start this. Wherever we're at, is there some, I'm going to just leave this really, really broad. I had some specific ideas here, but I just want to leave it really broad. You can ask Jesus the specifics later on today, but just on a broad scale, Jesus, what is one thing you want to do in me over the next three months? As we journey this out together as a church, what's one thing, one breakthrough, one break off, something you want to break off my life or something you want to do in me? What's one thing you want to do in me? Maybe my body, maybe my soul, my thinking, maybe my spirit. What's one thing you want to do in me over the next couple months? I'm just going to listen for a second. Hmm. This is good. Come on. If you have a device or a journal hand, you just write that down, whatever it is. Even if you're going like, oh, no, that can't be God. Trust me. Oh, I don't know how many times I have to say this. If you ask him something and, he set, and you sense something at that point, it's likely God speaking. And if it seems a little strange, just hold on to it. Don't go out there and just, don't go out there and just do it. Just hold on to it. Sit on it and let him bring more clarification. The James 1 makes it so clear. When you ask for wisdom from your father, he loves to give it. And remember this. He's not just about your spiritual life. Of course, he is about that. He is about holiness. He is about your eternity for sure. But like David said, he said this in Psalm 91. He said, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God is about your spirit, but God is about your thinking. And God is about your soul. And God is about your body. And so if you heard something there, I want you to hold on to it. And um, we'll continue to journey this out together. You guys doing okay? Watching the comments? Lots of good comments there. Uh, you guys are obviously sensing something about pressure and how it's a good thing, producing strength. It's good. It's good. I'm going to pray and I'm going to let you guys go. Have a great afternoon. Be blessed. Jesus, thank you for this time we've had together this morning just to worship you and to love on you and to declare your goodness. This is what you do. 
this is what you do. You make me come alive. What a great song to start this live stream with. This is what you do. You make me come alive. And you are after something in me that, that at the end of it, I come along in my walk with you, body, soul, and spirit. I learn what it means to love you, God, with all of my heart, with all of my spirit, yes, but with all of my mind and with all of my intelligence, and yes, even with all of my strength and muscle. That's the kind of thing we want to do, and we want to experience in that journey what it looks like to be living in the life and life fully that you've called us into, in Jesus' name. So whatever you spoke to us there as we were listening, Jesus, I pray for more clarification. Open our ears, open our eyes to see how you're leading us personally, even as you lead us corporately, and you do lead us well. Jesus, we thank you for that. Thank you for who you are. And I pray, God, for throughout the rest of this Sunday, this Sabbath day for us, so be filled with moments of hanging with you, hearing your voice, experiencing your presence. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Awesome, have a great afternoon, guys. We'll see you soon.